Welcome to Spitfire Mods. This is a short video of an example of a PS3 that is showing uh, signs of reflow. This unit has just had new thermal compound put on. It was a reflowed, um, it was a previously reballed and reflowed uh, machine. Um, it had a defective ZSSR power supply in it. As you know, the early four port units, the A and the EO1 units, have been known for to have a defective uh, ZSSR power supply in them. Uh, you can tell by the model number on the power supply. It is going to say ZSSR 5391A or, or IA. 5391A. Um, it actually is an IA, I believe. So it's ZSSR 539IA. Um, this is a power supply that is known for as age. As it ages, it creates a lot of heat, and there's some huge copper heat sinks in here, and this whole thing is one giant chunk of metal that heats up as hot as the GPU almost, um, to the point where you can't even touch it. Uh, that unit can cause these units to, to relapse or to fail initially by the amount of heat that it creates in the upper half of the unit, and then the fan is, since it's located in the bottom, it can't keep it cool enough. Um, we're going to go ahead and turn this unit on, and as you'll see... Um, this unit's been repaired. Uh, this power supply actually would heat up and then shut off. So we put a new APS-226 in it, which is the recommended replacement. And uh, the part number is APS-226. But what you'll notice is the fan is steadily increasing. When you turn the unit on, the fan steadily increases. Even though it does boot up, the fan is now almost at max speed. It's probably one, maybe one or two notches below max. So if you listen, you can hear the fan is running pretty hard. Um, it's not at max because you can feel the air blowing out, but it's not blowing out, uh, and it's not as loud. They get they get actually as loud as a vacuum cleaner, pretty much. Uh, this unit sounds loud, but it's not, you know, it's, you could almost still play a game. So it's elevated, and um, replacing the power supply did cause the unit to become elevated and stay on, but the unit's still, um, still running elevated. So what we're going to do is we're going to strip the unit down and pop the heat spreader and replace the thermal compound underneath the heat spreader. We already did the thermal compound on top of the heat spreader, so the only thing we can try next is to remove the heat spreader, uh, remove all the epoxy and the residue of the, heat, the heating compound, and then replace it with new, new heating compound. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll be back to see um, how the unit's working then. Okay, so what we found underneath this heat spreader is the fact that these units had a lot of um, resin-based flux on them previous to our initial repair, which we um, didn't really notice until we took it apart this last time. Um, didn't remember that that was the case earlier, but I used some deionized water to clean up a lot of that resin-based flux around the chip, and then I pulled this heat spreader and reapplied it with Arctic Silver 5. Um, after scraping it and cleaning it. So we have them back together ready to go and we're going to re reassemble and see how it works. Okay, as you can see the unit's back together and running and it's elevated just like it was before. Um, it's actually running almost on the max setting um, pretty much about the same as it was before. Uh, the only difference is um, at this point it has a new thermal compound on and you can actually feel some warmth coming out of the heat, heat sinks where before it would run elevated and you couldn't really feel a lot of heat coming out. So I believe at this point it will be able to, um, to possibly maintain heat. What I'm looking for is to burn it in for an hour or two and then to uh, let it cool down and to recycle it and see if it actually brings itself under control. Um, Arctic Silver 5 has a very long curing time. but uh, there's now two layers of Arctic Silver 5 both above and below the heat sink, so it's going to need some heat and some pressure to actually allow that to, um, to completely compress and bring those plates closer together, which will give it more of a thermal, a thermal relief. So um, we will see, uh, see how it performs. The unit is running. Um, when we first put it together, it would actually shut itself off. It would elevate and shut itself off. So what I did was I, um, 
I bent the heat sink clamps. Um, they were very flat, so I bent them to where they usually have a little bit of a bend in them, and that put more pressure on it, and that seems to have actually changed changed its its overheating so to be now under control so I believe that it, we're dealing with just the uh, the thickness of the compound at this point um, I should have probably tried an MX2 because it's a much more viscous material but we can always try that so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually run this for burn and see how it does and see if it brings it under control and if it doesn't then we will we'll get rid of the Arctic Silver 5 and we'll switch to something that's a lot more a lot more uh, liquidy or viscous so that we can actually get a tight tolerance on our heat sinks which should make a difference. Um, the fact that it reacts to that thickness um, tells me that we may be able to work.